last few years, the Texas School Board is responsible for spreading misinformation and adding agenda-based rhetoric into textbooks for all of their schools. You know what they say, everything is big in Texas, including the lies they spread. Ten gallon hats were full of lies. Good chili though. Ten gallon hats worth of chili. One of these textbooks that Texas has put into the curriculum says that the Founding Fathers were influenced by Moses' Ten Commandments in writing the Bill of Rights. I mean, well, duh, there's ten of each of those rules. Uh, that's obviously the transitive property of the Lords. And it makes sense, too. Obviously, the right to bear arms goes hand in hand with thou shall not kill which would make all the guns in Texas big shiny paperweights that are just symbols of your hypermasculinity and the hug that you never got from your dad. Now this was done to push the idea that America is a Christian nation forward. Tiny little problem with that. Moses was Jewish, so I guess since about 2010, Texas has been pushing the thought that we're a Jewish nation? Oh man, does the KKK have egg all over its sheets, burning all those crosses in the name of a Christian nation. Should have been burning a star this entire time. But if you believed in science, you would realize that stars are always burning. They also refer to slaves as workers and trivialize the issues within the American Civil War. Listen, Texas School Board, okay, you don't control the dictionary, so you don't get to just change the definition of words just because you want black people to stop asking for an apology and reparations, okay? I mean, slaves don't get paid. Workers do. Some workers get paid slave wages, but they're still called workers. I mean, this is the reason why I'm against internships. They're basically slaves, right? It's basically slavery. I was a slave at two different design agencies when I was in college, and you could say that I want reparations for not being able to use whatever font I wanted. Okay, wingdings totally make sense if you smoke as much pot as an average college student. Or
of the conservative faction of the Texas School Board, Don McElroy, states, We are adding balance. History has already been skewed. Academia is skewed far to the left. Sure, if you want to claim calling out exploitation and manipulation leftists rather than stating the facts. I mean, this is how nationalistic propaganda begins. Get them while they're young. Don't teach them that the Native Americans had their land stolen by invaders, but rather that they were the attackers who, who just went in and they uh, savagely attacked the very nice Europeans who just had gifts of blankets and turkeys for everybody. It's how we become a country that believes that we need to own a gun to protect ourselves from invisible dangers rather than learn how to communicate with each other on an empathetic and intellectual level. Teach these kids that fear is stronger than curiosity and the only way to stop the unknown is through an Uzi or a shotgun. Let's change capitalism to free enterprise so we really focus on making all that money. And really, the only person that this enterprise is free for is those at the top. Us plebes at the bottom have to keep toiling and working hour after hour to earn that very shiny penny while they take all the dollar bills. Capitalism is good because it keeps you working so that you don't have to do all that strenuous thinking and reading of new ideas to try to advance humanity. And Well, hello, everybody. How are you guys out there? I hope you guys are doing well. Doing a late stream tonight. 
a little bit of a late stream, uh, kind of a, 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 a good wonky, crazy day. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I was just, I was just on Graham Elwood's show. Uh, we just wrapped up a little bit ago. We were talking about what's been going on with, uh, with my car and what the bank's been doing and all that. Uh, and, uh, part of, I mean, a big reason I want to share this, the, the, the story in its entirety with as many people as I can is because, you know, I'm not the only one. <laughs> and if they're doing it to me, they're doing it to, uh, countless others. Um, and we, and we talked about that on, on Graham's stream. So if you haven't checked that out, um, you, I'll, I'll be sharing it around, uh, uh, the social feeds. You can, you can, you'll probably see it on my website and all that. Um, you know, to give you guys a quick update, I didn't do a stream yesterday because I was on the phone with, um, a credit union and the bank that, uh, citizens won the, for five hours. Um, and it was incredibly frustrating, incredibly like emotionally taxing. So I got very little done. I wasn't able to like do any of the research or anything that I wanted to do for that day, uh, for yesterday. And I just like tapped out by like three 30. I was just, I didn't have a whole lot of energy left in me to do much of anything. Um, so I <clears throat> ended up feeling terrible about myself and all that all that fun stuff that comes with uh with uh, an, an insurmountable amount of stress and panic um and I, and I found out some key pieces of information like uh pretty much the the credit union will not take my application because I have a repossession even though they said that they'd look at it on a case by case basis um but they're and they haven't given me any reasons as to like what happened, you know, was, did, did we take things into consideration? So that was a frustrating conversation to have. Uh, and then, you know, the bank hasn't sent me a statement for this month. And I was like, well, I feel like they're trying to fuck with me because if I don't send in a check, you know, they'll, they'll claim that I'm missing payments again and, um, and try to repo the car and a second repossession, it would, would just be death. Um, and I would go through even more and it makes me think like, okay, did they do this on purpose? Found out it was routed to a different department. You know, every time they clear a check, another bill supposed to get sent out. Well, that didn't happen. Uh, I had a check that cleared earlier in the month, I think on July 5th or 6th, which means that it would have been sent out. It would have been received about a week and a half ago. Uh, and that, none of that happened. And they were like, oh, we'll get that out for you. And this, that, and the third. And it was like, no, you guys weren't planning on sending me this unless if I wouldn't have called you, if I wouldn't have fucking said anything. Uh, so yeah, so all of that kind of just emotionally drained me. Um, and I was physically like exhausted. So like today was a little bit better. I knew that I had all these things going on. Uh, and then at nine o'clock tonight, I'm going to be on the, uh, action for Assange vigil. Highly recommend you guys come join us uh, over there. Um, and uh, so I, I have a couple things. I have I have an article that I need to finish reading for that as well. Uh, but I got to exercise today. That that was like a huge booster. I I got to eat like proper meals. <laughs> like I kind of had like I kind of had a lunch. I kind of had a, a dinner. So that's kind of big. Uh, I don't normally get to do that sort of stuff. Um, but, uh, or, or I haven't been able to do that sort of stuff because it's been so stressful and busy and crazy. Um, and, uh, last but not least, if you're in Pittsburgh, uh, August 14th, I'm going to be doing, uh, my full brand new show. I'm, I'm going to be doing the whole thing top to bottom for the very first time in front of a live audience, August 14th in Pittsburgh, Irma Freeman, uh, center for imagination tickets are available. Now the link is in the comment section. You guys should definitely grab tickets if you're in town. I will have uh, more uh, ticket information uh, for a lot more shows uh, coming up in the next uh, next week or two. So stay tuned for that. But I've got you know shows coming up all over the place. Some some of the shows are getting rearranged, reorganized. That sort. Of, so um, you know I'll I'll keep you guys posted if, if anything changes. And hopefully you know uh, the numbers don't go up because if the numbers go up that. The, I'm going to have to postpone these shows because it's just not going to be uh, safe or conducive to, to do that, to, to do anything live. Um, and, uh, and, and we would need to take some more precautions. So um, yeah, that's, that's where things are, but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm opti cautiously optimistic. 
I'm looking forward to August 14th. I've got a bunch of dates already listed on the website. So uh, check the website, sign up for the email list, and you'll get all that information. All right. Uh, let's dive into the into our stories for 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 the day. Uh, cool. So I saw this article last week, and I've I've been meaning to I've I've really wanted to talk about this because it just it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you see why I'm not a fucking Democrat. <laughs> you see why I don't espouse to either of the two corporate parties because they're both full of shit. Uh, so. Pelosi, it, it recently came out, Glenn Greenwald wrote an, an, an excellent piece on his Substack uh, that uh, Pelosi's wealth, her enormous wealth, she's a hundred millionaire, is connected to big tech. Uh, go figure, right? In 2004, she, uh, she made $41 million. She was worth $41 million, right? And now, as of today, she, is, she, she makes $115 million dollars so like well over double her her wealth in in um what is that 15 years right <clears throat> that's that's a lot she's uh she's apparently apparently the the sixth richest congress person uh and then you got to think like well you know if if you're um if you're if you're somebody that is representing the people how can you relate to them if you are making astronomically more than them? $115 million means that you don't know what it's like to, um, you know, to, to have your car repossessed, for example. <laughs> you don't have, uh, you don't really know what it's like to lose your home, to lose your job and not know where your income is going to come from for a little while, whether you're going to be able to afford food or pay your rent, whether, you know, you can get your kids the books that they need, the school supplies they need. You don't know that struggle. So how can you legislate uh, with compassion, with understanding, if you don't know what the people are going through? Or the consequences of your of your legislations, right? That's the other thing I don't think she really knows. I don't think she really knows the consequences of her legislation either. Like she'll write and pass bills. Like last year, she was like upholding Cobra. Oh, Cobra, Cobra is going to be great. When it's like, no, Cobra is pretty fucking terrible. And what we need, uh, especially during a pandemic, we need you know medical universal health care in general. But especially during a pandemic, I think people need universal health care. Um, you know, to make sure that they're not they they can they can get checked up when they need to they can make an appointment with a doctor and walk out of there without a without an astronomical bill so that's that's some stuff that that you can't really relate to how can you relate to losing your health care when you've never had to lose your health care you know i'm not saying that congress people should live in poverty uh, but they should know what that's like if they're gonna if they're gonna legislate within a capitalist system, and they're gonna claim that they legislate out of love and out of compassion. No, uh, advocating for Cobra and 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 turning down a universal basic income and turning down universal health care is not legislating out of compassion. And moreover than that, um, so they found out that you know the the Glenn Greenwald article. Uh, basically exposes the fact that 75% of what she makes comes from the tech industry. Uh, we're talking Apple, we're talking Google, we're talking Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft. Uh, so all of those are where she's getting three quarters of that $115 million. These are, these are stocks that she's uh, bought and sold, uh, which that automatically should be fishy why are why are politicians investing in wall street which is supposed to be an industry that they are supposed to write legislation to 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 regulate right like why are they participating in the stock market they are supposed to be public servants who are supposed to legislate on behalf of the people and they are invested in in a game and that's what it is it's a ponzi scheme that's what wall street and wall street is uh, they're invested in a game where if they let it run amok and if they let the companies that also play this game kind of run amok, they themselves will become wealthier and richer. Why are they allowed to do that? 
That's the question we should immediately ask. Furthermore, it should it should clear up as to why I don't do these live streams on YouTube anymore. And the reason for that is because of major censorship. Uh, so, you know, if you look at any videos that have been critical about the Democratic Party uh, and, um, you know, the victory of Joe Biden, for example, or if you call out election uh, fraud, if you call out election fraud or uh, voter disenfranchisement, your videos disappear and you get a strike on your channel or your channel will disappear because you're talking about this stuff too much. Well, the leader of the Democrats in, in Congress uh, is very, very closely tied to one of the companies that controls YouTube, Google. So Google Google is the parent company of, of YouTube. The, the queen of the Democrats is, you know, does, does well, gains more wealth when Google does better. If Google takes a hit, that's not so good. So let's protect our interests and let's put these new vague rules in that will shut down anybody that criticizes the party so the party can look really good. They can pass legislation that helps Google. Continue. You see the cycle? No one's, able, no one's allowed to criticize. This is how money becomes authoritarianism. This is how the stock market leads to authoritarianism. Speech control. You don't have free speech when big tech says you can't talk about certain topics. Lefties were calling out election fraud, voter disenfranchisement for years. Uh, but all of a sudden, you know, Trump, they, they need to push the Russia narrative and all that kind of shit. And all of a sudden you can't say that there's voter disenfranchisement. You can't point out the, the uh, 200,000 black people that were thrown off the rolls in Georgia. You can't point out the, the the problems within the American electoral system. You can't point out the fact that we can't verify our votes. All of a sudden, that's not allowed to talk. You can't talk about that on YouTube or Facebook. Gee, I wonder why. Could it have something to do with the fact that, you know, the person that controls the Democratic Party within Congress and sits on a bunch of committees that are supposed to regulate these companies is making money off of them. It's in her best interest to let them run amok and control any sort of the any sort of narratives that that might speak ill of the Democrats. Same thing. This is why Democrats are also anti-union because Amazon is anti-union. And unionization might look bad on Amazon, which means their stock might go down. Because Jeff Bezos isn't the king of Amazon anymore. I bet Nancy Pelosi was fucking thrilled with his dong-shaped rocket. And that rocket does look like a penis. There's no argument about that at all. There's no argument about that. And of course, Bezos sat right in the tip. But I bet she was thrilled that that happened. Super excited. Oh, man, this makes Amazon look really good. I bet their stocks will go way up. Why? Why are you investing in this? You're supposed to be you're supposed to be legislating on behalf of the people. And these are companies that are hurting the people. Amazon is one of the worst companies to work for. People in that company have uh, died. There's there's actually a story that came out today about somebody committing suicide at one of their factories uh, and what warehouses. You know, why are you supporting this company? Why aren't, why aren't you, if the Democrats really are a party that champions the people, why aren't they out there supporting labor strikes? That's what they should do. But if you know the history of the Democrats, they don't do that. The Democrats have always been a party for private industry. That's how they started. That was their bread and butter from the beginning. And then somewhere, you know, through the the waves of propaganda that have come across American history, people started thinking that they were the good guys. P probably because the Republicans were just so outwardly like cartoonish villain. You know, like if the Republicans weren't like, I'd like to pass a bill that allows us to tie up pretty women to railroad tracks 
and, and wear capes and have twirly mustaches. I'd like to write, like, if they weren't trying to pass bills like that. And also, I would like black people to be stopped, considered to be people. We are the Republican Party. Like, if they would stop being cartoonishly evil, you know, people would be able to see the Democrats for what they are. But the, the Republicans are just, like, they're insane. They're just... And I mean, the Democrats are re kind of responsible for pushing the party even further to the right than it already was. That's what Joe Biden and, and the Clintons did uh, with the Democratic Party by being tough on crime or as Kamala Harris says, smart on crime by putting single moms in prison for truancy problems. Uh, they, they wanted to prove that they were tougher than the Republicans. And so they created the prison industrial complex. They created a mass incarceration. They created all these problems, and and the and the Republicans had to go. Well, well, fuck. If if they're if these Democrats are going to do the exact same thing we are, and they're going to use the same scare tactics and propaganda that we are, we're going to lose our base to them because they seem kind of nice. We're you know people are going to start Republicans are going to start voting for Democrats now, so they had to out. They had to go further to the right in order to be like we are. Look, we're more right wing than they are. Microsoft, controlled by Bill Gates. This is why the Democrats aren't, you know, releasing the patents so that uh, other countries around the world that desperately need the vaccine can get it, get it, can make it, and distribute it amongst your people. These vaccines are supposed to be life saving and and stop the spread of this pandemic. Shouldn't you want to get this out? But again, it goes into the narrative of like the pandemic is over now. Don't worry about the variants. It's over now. It's like what the rest of the world is still dealing with this shit. Why are why is in America? If America, the, the the big claim for America is that oh we use the military to help people, then do that right now. You can do that. You can be the distributor of so many vaccines across the world. You can release those patents and help so many fucking countries across the world. You could lift the embargo on Cuba, who has two vaccines that work very well against the variants. And help out a whole bunch of people across the world. But you won't. Because because then Nancy Pelosi might lose money from her Microsoft stocks. It's expensive, Bill Gates said. Now, Pelosi claims that she's very lucky because she bought and sold at the right time. Um it's that's a little fishy. I mean, we we a couple people got caught, and I think Pelosi's a little bit smarter than this. Uh, you know, uh, Richard Burr, Dan, D D uh, Diane Feinstein, and a missing one from Georgia, Lofler, I think. Uh, was it Amber or Amanda Lofler? I'm I'm I'm. She's a Georgia congressperson. And uh, they dumped stocks in industries they knew weren't going to do well because of the COVID shutdown. They, that's insider trading. That's illegal. Um, and, you know, her statement of saying, oh, well, I've just been lucky is like super fucking suspect. Super fucking suspect. And people should be like, oh, it's weird. It's weird that every single time you have bought or sold, you've made a shit ton of money. That's kind of strange. Now. This is how close she is tied to to the, the, the to big tech, right? Before voting on an antitrust tech law, right? That would that it's basically trying to prevent monopolies, which is exactly what these companies are. And I'll we'll go over we'll go over how because I'm sure people are like, oh, monopolies don't exist in America. Remember, we learned that in school. That's how capitalism regulates itself: checks and balances, baby. That's no. Uh, that's not at all. It's it's not. See, that's the thing. Is like this compassionate capitalism only exists in theory. In reality, capitalism is a brutal, ruthless system that fucks everybody over, except for the few that are already rich. But she so before they voted on this antitrust law that would affect big tech, you know, in a in a very negative way, would it would it, it would kind of restrict them. Tim Cook, Apple CEO Tim Cook, called Nancy Pelosi to have a conversation about this. That immediately, you know, and, and Greenwald points this, points this out, is that 
immediately should be a red flag of, wait a minute, what the fuck? Why does somebody like Tim Cook have Nancy Pelosi's direct line? Why can he have an immediate conversation? I can't have an immediate conversation with Nancy Pelosi or, or any of any of the, the Congress people that represent me. I can't just dial the fucking mayor's office and be like, hey, dude, it's Chris. What's up, dog? We got some potholes we need to fix. Where are you at on this? We can't. I can't do that. Can anybody call any of their Congress people directly? I mean, that's the thing that people say. Call your Congress people. Call your Congress people. T Tim Cook, and I would I would also wager to bet uh, fucking Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates. I don't remember who the CEO of Google is, but I bet they all have direct lines. Mark Zuckerberg probably has a direct line. Mark Zuckerberg probably goes over to Nancy Pelosi's house and and eats ice cream with her as as poor kids uh, across America can't afford their lunches. Their job is not to create more monopolies, right? Remember remember back in, I want to say November or December of last year, uh, when Nancy Pelosi freaked the fuck out on Wolf Blitzer, where she fucking lied. It was such a, it's so funny. It's, it's literally one of the funniest clips I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but like Wolf Blitzer was like, hey, this, like you guys aren't really looking to help a lot of people with this new stimulus bill that you guys got going on. Uh, and she starts freaking out and she goes, we feed people. We feed people. Wolf, wolf, wait, wolf, we look, wolf, wolf, we feed people. And it's like, no, you no, you don't. We represent. They voted to for us to represent. You don't do that, though. In in a, in a system run by capitalism. Let's let's just put this out there in a system run by capitalism where money dominates the political you know, political sphere, there are no politicians that represent the average working class people. They can't because they're not working for you. They're working to uplift a system that wants to crush you. Her claim of uh, her feeding people is, my God, what an oligarchical fucking statement. You're not feeding people. If you were, there wouldn't be food lines going for miles back. People wouldn't be getting evicted out of their homes right now. Homeless encampments wouldn't be attacked. This is an economic, I mean, this, this is an economic divide that you're manufacturing. So people like Jeff Bezos can get ultra rich and take fucking joy rides to space. That's how fucking out of touch and bored these people are. They're just like, meh, the planet bores me. I shall take this to space. Build me a rocket in the exact image of my genitals. But clearly make it larger because we have to fit people inside my genitals. That's, that's... What a fucking what, what I mean if 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 nothing that exposes capitalism for what it is right there's a bunch of assholes that are standing for Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and fucking what's that Virgin Airlines uh guy uh Branson okay they're like championing that they all get to they're all going to space because they're like maybe we'll get to Star Trek really really you want to get to space communism via the capitalists going to space that's how you want the aliens to meet us. You want the aliens to meet us and then for them to go, how much money do you have? We'll let you come onto the planet if you give us some money because that's what they're going to do. And then the aliens will wage war on, on the planet because we insulted them because they're a culture that, uh, that values intelligence, that values progress, that values equality. And they'll see us and they'll see Jeff Bezos trying to fucking trying to earn a little extra to let some aliens land on this planet and boom. That's how we get what happened on Independence Day. I wouldn't be surprised if that's why those aliens came to Earth. Is because some fucking asshole billionaire went to space, pissed off these aliens, and they're like, fucking, well, let's get rid of these hairless primates. They're wrecking their planet anyway. It'll fucking reset. 
their job is to break up monopolies like Amazon, okay, which which is a has a, a, a ho, um, is a web host. They're a retail site. They now have groceries because he's acquired uh, uh, Whole Foods. They're undercutting their own. I mean, they're undercutting people that are on their website by creating products. So now they're manufacturers as well. They're a delivery service. Yeah, Amazon has its own fleet of planes and trucks. They don't use the postal service. They're 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 partaking in delivery. In fact, I get um, you know I I've I've had to purchase a couple things tech related. Uh, like I have my Bluetooth headphones and this uh, pop filter. Uh, you know, a couple of the uh, like USB C extenders, and uh, and I use a website called Newegg because I didn't want to go on Amazon. Well, it turns out I can't fucking escape it, man. Because they use Amazon's delivery service. <laughs> yeah. It gets wrapped in a fucking Amazon thing. And I was like, what the f I'm coming to you guys to get the fuck away from this guy. But that's that's how they... It's, I mean, that's a monopoly. Even different websites can't get away from these guys. Google. Google has YouTube. They're an email service. They're a search engine. Uh, they're trying. They they made vir glasses, virtual reality. They're trying to make a car. So is Apple. They also have web hosting. I mean, they're taking over various aspects of the internet. Apple has. I'm. I'm you know, I use a MacBook Pro. I have an iPhone. That's a computer, phone, tablet, screens. They're also getting into making cars. Apparently, I had a friend of mine that told me that. I was like, that's just fucking dumb. Uh, the music, uh, you know, they have a they're they're a music distributor, they're a podcast distributor, they're an entertainment service, Apple TV. I mean, they started out as a company that made computers. Microsoft. Why is Bill Gates the biggest question you should, everybody should be asking? Is why is Bill Gates in, uh, involved in the medical industry? That's that's you. You're a fucking. You're a computer guy. Go, get the fuck out of the medical industry. You can partner with the medical industry, but you're in you're in it. These are monopolies. These should be broken up. These should not be allowed to exist. They are too big. Again, in schools, you learn that hey, America doesn't have monopolies, and and which is a, which is a blatant fucking lie. This is a legal bribery exists in our system. Nancy Pelosi has stocks in these companies. The legislation and laws she passes and writes will help these companies. People that get paid either during campaigning or when they get into office and they continue to purchase stocks from these companies that they can later sell and make you know, bajillions of dollars, that should not be how... A system that is run by... A government system that's run by capitalism will have legal bribery because it needs it to survive. That's the reality. There, there's no, there's no arguing that. This is why politicians don't represent the people. And for anybody that comes out and says that to you, just that's, I mean, at this point, it's just like laughable when people are like, "Well, politicians represent us." No, they don't. No, they don't. They represent corporations. They represent private industry. They represent capitalism. They represent an economic system that wants to fucking kill you. Let's look at your comments. Uh, Lynn, hey, it's very good to see you. I haven't seen you in a little while. Hope you're still hanging out in the stream. Uh, Lynn says we're like the Ferengi. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if that's what we are. You know, there's the like that's 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 our next evolutionary step. Is not uh, is not transcendence. Is not is not the glory of space communism that is Star Trek in and of itself. It's we become the Ferengi. We we don't join the Federation, and we're all about money. Uh, and, and we're kind of loathed across the, across the galaxy because nobody wants to fucking deal with us. You know, like <laughs> that show does do a really good job of being like, this is what capitalists look like. <laughs> 
And I mean, if you look at Jeff Bezos, he's almost there. The ears are large. You know, all he needs is a bigger brow and forehead. They only think about sex. The man built a rocket that looks like a dong. Come on. Come on. Pop over to Rockfin. Cynical girl, welcome. Uh, Cynical girl says, take a drive through her district in San Francisco. It's a horror show. She doesn't give a fuck. Uh, the, the stock market, I call it the global casino. Yeah, I, uh, I have San Francisco is rough, man. It is, it is, uh, it is, it is rough to be in. And, you know, it is set in this backdrop of this very, like driving in, you just see these fucking mansions and it is just, oh, heartbreaking to walk through that town. Heartbreaking to walk through that town. Uh, yeah, as as CG points out, look at look at her own district and tell me how many people she feeds. She has two fucking fridges full of ice cream, and uh, and there are people in her uh, in in her hometown in the, the city that she resides in that don't have a roof over their heads. You know that are that a a school teacher or a cop cannot afford to live in San Francisco on a full time and full full time employment basis. Uh, CG says, I remember hearing that shit when I hadn't eaten in two days and missed the food distribution at the food bank. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her ice cream thing was horrifying to watch. And that's, I mean, and, and look, that's, that's what has happened to comedians that wind up on the mainstream. This is another fucking essay I want to write is just the, the, the corporate absorption of comedians of an art form that is meant to 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 challenge power and to hold a mirror up to society and you have people like james corden on late night television fucking you know propping up people in power oh what a fucking disgusting segment what a disgusting segment uh i did a whole thing on it did a whole thing on it all right folks we're going to be moving on to segment number two. I've talked a lot about this topic, and uh, we continue to talk about this topic because it's fucking important. <laughs> There's a control over education, people. They're trying to they're trying to steal a kid's minds, man. But they are trying to steal a kid's minds uh, by controlling education. That is it. Controlling education is is key in any fascist dystopia. I, I, I just don't understand how people fucking don't see that shit. When you, when you start telling people what they can't teach and how, and how they should teach what they're allowed to teach, uh, that's fascism. And you're, and you're kind of teaching that subservience uh, and, and a false reality to children. And I don't know if you've met children, uh, but... Uh, you don't need to, they will do a great job creating false realities. I mean, I had a whole, uh, I had a, when I was, this is, okay, here's a fun, weird fact about Krish. When I was a kid, I used to have uh, a schedule, like a television schedule, because in my mind, it was a TV show, you know, uh, I, 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 I was, I thought I was on the Truman Show before the Truman Show was a thing. Does that make sense? Uh, and, so I would write out the schedule of like, this is, you know, this is what I'm doing between this time and what people are watching. And like the, a the action figures I would play with were like a show. So every time I had an episode, like I had seasons for things, I had this continuous storyline. Uh, and I used to, so look, I built my own fucking false reality. I didn't need school to teach me a false reality. I mean, they did, but I didn't need them to. Uh, I was, I was, uh, I mean, I want to brag, but my false reality was pretty cool. You guys, Spider-Man was there. Batman was there. They hung out. I didn't give, I didn't, I didn't give, I, it, I was at that age where like nerd rivalries didn't matter either. So like Spider-Man and Batman were solving crimes together and shit. It was dope. It was dope. Definitely. I, I feel like, like net, if they could, Netflix would buy that show. Anyway, uh, moving on. So, 
So here's here's what's going on in Texas, right? Uh, and this is coming amid the wave of like all of these stories of so many conservatives freaking out about critical race theory and spreading all this crazy bullshit about it. And I and I talked about it last week. I had a friend that came over and we had a really frustrating conversation over it. Um, and and I had some realizations in that conversation about this individual that you know like and, and but it was just like mm, okay. Uh, the 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 kind of utopian concept you are bringing up is true but the methods of achieving that is nonsensical uh and doesn't make any sense so uh so i think because of that there you know i i was i was kind of waiting for this i was like i don't know if we'll go in this direction just yet because there's so much other crazy shit going on now um but they they went there so there's a new bill in texas uh, SB3, and it basically wants to eliminate making it a requirement to teach kids about the civil rights and about, uh, which includes Martin Luther King Jr., right? Which is like every fucking Republicans go to, uh, see, I believe in black people. I liked Martin Luther King, okay? I liked him. I don't believe he should have voted, but I like it. I liked it. Wait, I should, I should stop talking. Yeah, like they, this is the per, even Republicans will fucking quote Martin Luther King Jr. And they and, uh, quoted him ad nauseum last year when the Black Lives Matter protests were going on. They were like, look, Martin Luther King Jr. said that you should be peaceful. Why don't you got, why don't all the black people in the country like protest like the way that white people tell you to? This is how politicians sound in my head. Uh, when they make stupid arguments, it's just the it's a valley girl. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean that to be insulting or anything, but I see them as a uh, spoiled 16 year old girl uh, whose parents have given them everything in the world, and they still find a way to complain about stuff. That's how I view politicians that complain about protests. Uh, okay. Here's all the things that uh, the this bill doesn't want kids to learn about or make it a requirement to learn about, right? Civil rights, uh, you know, including MLK, uh, Frederick Douglass, Dolores Huerta, uh, and uh, they also want teaching of uh, KKK slavery and Jim Crow laws um, as not morally wrong, uh, meaning they want to teach uh, racism in a positive light, uh, or as I see it, a centrist West dream. Because it's always the centrist, it's always the centrist that comes out and he goes, well, I'm a centrist. So, like, let's look at, like, why people are racist. And it's like, yes, you should learn the source of why people are racist. But learning the source of something does not justify or excuse said behavior. It gives you a source point to go, aha, let's talk about that and work through that. And maybe you won't be this anymore. You'll be a, a changed and more evolved individual. That's not what they're talking about. They're basically like, here's the reasons why racism needs to exist. Here's the reason why it's it's not really bad to judge people based on the color of their skin and then ruin their lives economically uh, and sometimes very violently. Here's the justification for slavery in America. The, the, the answer to that is fucking there isn't any. If you're a human being with even an ounce of compassion in your heart, enslaving another fucking human being wouldn't even cross your mind. It just wouldn't. Using economics to oppress another group of people because they look different than you on the surface wouldn't cross your mind if you had a drop of fucking compassion in your body. They want you to teach these topics without deference. You can't you can't provide positive reasoning. There is no positive reasons for racial hatred. There just there isn't, man. There isn't. There's no positive justifications for you know destroying a human being's life because they don't look the same as you or don't believe in the same God as you or any of that sort of stuff. There's, there's no fucking positive justification for it. But Texas wants you to teach as if there is. So lie. So lie to your kids. Lie to your kids about bigotry and racism and discrimination. Lie to your kids about the, the, the history 
of bigotry, discrimination, and racism that fucking exists in the core of this country. How about this? How about instead instead we do this? We teach people the accurate history of America. We teach people uh, what the founding fathers did, who they were, why what they did was important to some people, why it negatively affected other people, and then let the kids make that they make the decision themselves. You give them accurate information, and you go, how do you guys feel about it on a moral and ethical level? Instead of being like, well, the plantation owner had to be the slaves because, I mean, they wanted to get paid. And what would the plantation owner do without having 38 different horses that they treated better than the slaves? What, would he have to settle for 37? How dare you? What, like, what? There, there's no justification for that. <laughs> that's, but that's what Texas wants you to do. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you leave it up to the kids, right? And, what, and, and really what you would be teaching them is critical thinking. Okay, how to how to think for themselves, how to how to be a free thinker, how to look at information and go, okay, this is how I'm arriving to this conclusion. But that's dangerous because if you if you actually teach critical thinking, if you actually teach true history, people will be able to spot propaganda so quickly. Networks like CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News would lose viewership overnight. Nobody would be able to get fooled into into wars. I am being a little hyperbolic, obviously, but you understand what I'm saying. There wouldn't be this argument over Black Lives Matter being too anti-white. It's like, what? That's it's that's not even white people. It's not even about white people. So can you can you guys just like sh be an ally and sh shut the fuck up? Can you can say stuff like you can keep saying Black Lives Matter, but like don't say like, yeah, but like what? But like all lives do, too, though. Like, don't say that shit. Ain't nobody want to hear that because it ain't about you, dog. So shut the fuck up. Look, the, the bottom line about this is that it's it's uh, uh, it's anti-critical race theory. Right. And there's been this big argument about critical race theory, what it is, why people should be against it, why it's evil. Oh, my God. I can't believe you would want to teach something like this. These are children. They'll never understand it. Oh, my God. But now uh, is, is my kid supposed to feel bad for bad uh, about about who he is and where he comes from? Well, no, not who he is, but where he came from is kind of shitty. And maybe if he learns how shitty it is, then that kid grows up to be a better person than the previous generations and doesn't do the same kind of harm to society that the previous generations did. So perhaps we should learn accurate history. So I don't know. We don't fucking repeat it. But it is right, and and really the 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 critics of critical race theory CRT. I'll I'll just call it CRT going forward. But the critics of that um, are uh, are people that either don't understand what it actually is, right? Teaching the idea and philosophy of um, of systemic racism, how it how it exists, and so on and so forth. Uh, or they're just spreading lies and false information about it. Hi hyperbolic false information to scare people. You know, it's it's like when you're a kid and you hear a rumor. This is, uh, this is a rumor I used to hear when I was in India is there was a three-headed witch living uh, on our roof. And I, and I would freak out every time. But some of the older kids started that rumor. Not, it was never substantiated, never proven. Um, and, uh, and I believed it because people talked about it and they were so scared about it and they say, they said it convincingly to you. And, and so I believed it. This is the same thing. The, the conservatives that are believing it are like, yeah, and they, uh, they, they want to teach kids about pornography in the third grade. They're going to show boobs and dicks. It's like, yeah, well, they'll find that in two years anyway. So if that is what they're doing, then I don't know, fucking let them get a head start, you know, positive sex education taught to kids when they were, when, uh, you know, Holy shit, wouldn't that fucking change the way that we handle relationships going forward in our lives? Maybe it would end soap operas. That's what they're afraid of. If they teach if they teach positive uh, sex education, soap operas would be done. <laughs> but they also just outright spread lies about what it is. 
you know, all white people are even no, historically speaking, white people have been colonizers and imperial imperialists that have come into, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Europeans mostly uh, have have come into different country, different nations, the, the Americas, South, North and South, Canada, fucking Africa, India, and they bring their armies and colonize these people. They exploit them and use them for labor, and they take all the profits and they give it to the oligarchy. Uh, what is? I mean, that's it's super fucking funny to me how sensitive these guys get about the actual history of the people that they consider heroes. Uh, and these are the same people that are like, don't be such a snowflake. So what? We use stereotypes and jokes. That's what makes it funny. Don't be such a snowflake. And then it's like, okay, thanks, colonizer. You can't fucking say that, man. That's not cool, bro. Like, immediately, it's the same people. It's like, oh, so it's okay for you to censor thought. When you when it's a thought that you don't like, when it's a piece of fact that you don't like, but when you want to say all the racist shit and people go, yeah, we don't think that's funny and we don't think that's cool anymore. These are low hanging fruit stereotypes that aren't really true and have like held communities back uh, in, in a lot of instances. Like, and they go, oh, you're being sensitive, but then you criticize them. You know, they start freaking out, right? Oh, Marxism. They're gonna teach me, okay. Eventually, yeah, the kids are going to figure out what Marx is. But then it's like, oh, well, we're, we're not supposed to have, we're supposed to treat this deferentially, right? We're, we're not supposed to have emotions behind the things that we teach. Teach it with some neutrality, right? That's what you want. If you're going to, if you're going to teach the civil rights movement, then you also have to teach uh, the, the perspective of the KKK member. So if you're going to champion capitalism, then you also have to teach the perspective of somebody that criticizes capitalism, such as Karl Marx and pretty much everybody that has a brain. That was a little mean, I know, but you get my point. Critical race theory is a higher education course. It's not being taught to fucking toddlers. It's just not. Not, it's, it's not to say that eight-year-olds can't comprehend what race is. I, I mean, I, I addressed this at a huge rant last week. How is it that you find it okay for these kids to experience racism but not learn about what it is and where it comes from? And how to combat it. POC kids have been dealing with racism their entire fucking lives. It's not a new concept to us. Putting a, putting a label to it helps. But if, I mean, if, but if you're going to say like, oh, well, you have to teach the capitalist. No, we've already been teaching the capitalist perspective. What's missing is the counter to it. The, crit, the, the critical elements to it. That's what we need to teach. And bills like this are trying to get rid of it. Now, you know, if you saw the little little clip at the beginning of the live stream, you, you, you saw me do uh, put up my one of my old videos talking about how the Texas school board really controls the education in the South, right? Because they're the they can place like 48 million books. You know, they so they the publishing company, the textbook publishing company is at the mercy of what Texas wants. And Texas, this is from 2016, this is five years ago, they wanted to change the word slaves to workers, which is just not a thing. You, no. They wanted to depict Mexicans as lazy drunks. It's like, really? Have you met a corporate CEO? <laughs> what did they do? We just watched 30 Rock. It's a, a you know very fun show. But it does show someone like Jack Donaghy, who is aspiring to be a corporate CEO, doing all this stuff. Really, Jack Donaghy is probably middle management, a very rich middle management person, because there's always people above him. But those people, you don't really see them doing anything, except throwing lavish parties and all that. Why do they get billions for doing virtually nothing? How is that a system that makes sense? That is something that's never made sense to me. All of a sudden, you move up and become the boss. You come to one meeting a week, but you clear out a billion dollars. But the person doing 40 hours of work or more, that person takes home maybe $10,000 before taxes. They, they wanted to teach... So again, they wanted to teach slaves and workers... And all Mexicans are lazy and drunk and, and live for tomorrow is what they said. 
So it's so it's racism. You're teaching racist propaganda in school. You're teaching low hanging fruit fucking stereotypes. You're making Jeff Dunham fans. You fucks. Not only that, but but making these certain specific topics no longer a requirement, right? And and Texas has the ability to do this. Texas Texas will make changes, and the publishers have to go along with it because the publishers know that Texas will buy a large amount of it. And then states that can't afford to buy even the minimum quantity, Texas will fucking hand it out. That's why Texas does that. So they control what goes into the books. So if if MLK, Frederick Douglass, Dolores Fuerte, Susan B. Anthony, uh, you know, uh, Mother Jones, a, any of these people are no longer a part of that textbook. And you're teaching things like, yeah, the KKK existed. And, um, and you know, they did some things. Some people thought it was bad. Other people really liked it, though. Uh, and then uh, and then they were kind of chill for a bit. They were like, send some of us. Uh, and then, oh, my God, racism came back in like in the 60s. And it's like, where did this fucking shit come from? It's like, it's always been there. But not making that a requirement means that if, if teachers want to teach it, like if a teacher wants to teach you about MLK, wants to teach you about any of this stuff, where are they going to get the materials to do that? They're going to get the materials from their own pockets. They're going to have to fucking provide that shit on their own. So you want to buy a book, like let's say they want to buy a biography of Martin Luther King, a biography of MLK. They're going to have to buy 30 copies of that by themselves. Where are they going to get the money for that? So that's what it does. So so now it puts teachers in a financial bind. So if, so if, if you do want to enlighten your children and make them intelligent members of society and not subservient drones in an authoritative fascist prop, uh, fucking dystopia, then these teachers have to virtually go bankrupt in order to ensure that the next generation of people uh, have some fucking understanding of racism in America. And then let's say th th these kids grow up. Like, let's say they fucking grow up in this education system and they and they finally get to college and they finally get out in the real world and then they start meeting people and they start hearing about racism and they go, what the fuck is going on? Oh my, I, none of this stuff was taught to me. I, I, I was taught that everything was fine. Martin, who is Martin Luther King Jr.? Who are you guys? This happened? I thought in the 60s, we went to the moon. We conquered the moon. The moon is America's now. I thought that's what happened in the 60s. I thought we stopped the the the, the awful communists in, in in Vietnam and Cuba and and Russia and all these other places. What are you talking? What is, what is this? And they start free, and then they'll start getting exposed to it as adults, realize that their entire fucking life was a lie, and probably get radicalized in some way, shape, or form. Probably violently, because that's what happens when you snap a fucking psyche like a goddamn rubber band. And that's the, that's the that's the re that's the future that they're heading to. Is that you're going to have these pockets of hyper radicalized kids that discover that their entire fucking life is a lie and, and break psychologically. Or you end up with subservient drones. That that will ignore the truth and just live in the comfort of their lies. And not know that there's actually something better for them to achieve to. And, and this is opening the Pandora's box. And there's been this attack on education for a long time. Uh, you know, I even remember when I was in college, they were saying that, oh, education is, 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 has, a, has a liberal bent. It has a left bent. No, history, facts have that. Facts show that exploitation of people is fucking bad. What's the, where are we, what is the argument on that? How are you going to justify exploitation? How are you going to justify slavery? I wouldn't be surprised if this is something that they piggyback on to trying to, um, you know, go after colleges and 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 write a bill that basically prevents colleges from teaching courses like this. Basically, stops colleges from teaching courses that remotely involve or resemble critical race theory or Marxism or any of these things or the true history of America or any of that stuff. 
that's a dangerous Pandora's box to open because that is leading us down into a fascist dystopia. I've said this before is no one, the, the problem with books like 1984, it's a good book. I really enjoy the book. Um, you know, and the problem is we never know how we arrived to that point. We just know that we have, and we know the elements that brought us to this reality. And, but we're looking at the, the makings of the elements now. Controlling education by deleting any sort of, quote, controversial topic such as race in America, which is a core foundation of how this fucking country was put together, is leading us down the, the fascist dystopian hellscape that we read in some of our most popular books. And if you are for this, you are incredibly ignorant. You are extremely ignorant and very privileged to have the ability to ignore the true history of this country that the rest of us, poor, poor white Americans, black American, poor black Americans, people of color, women, the LGBTQ plus community all have had to live through. And if you are somebody that has lived through it and still side with these people that want to control your education, that want to say that we can't teach history the way that history exists, so we have to rewrite it and manufacture it. If you support that idea and you've been through all of this turmoil in your life, then fucking A, do you have Stockholm Syndrome. And boy, howdy, I, I you know, run out of patience and I run out of ways to try and help you. Because the system is not benefiting you either. Let's look at your comments. Uh, Melanie, good to see you. Uh, hopefully, I will see you in Louisville when I come through in the fall. Uh, I will be putting up uh, ticket links for that soon, Melanie. I'm, I'm very, it'd, be, it'd be great to see you and, and Rolf and everybody down and down the old Louisville. Uh, Melanie says they hang out at the franchise happy hours and talk about inf uh, their infidelities. That's what billionaires are doing instead of, uh, instead of actual work, right? <laughs> They're talking about how they can shape rockets like more dongs. Uh, that's what they're talking about. Da, 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 da. Oh, uh, uh, Cynical Girl points out Jesse Jett nailed it in in, in Pelo uh, Pelosi in his song Speaker of the House. Is that the one that starts with the, the Sunday morning uh, loop? That creepy fucking thing that she did. It's a, it's a good morning, Sunday morning thing. I can't remember if that's the if that's the song that I'm thinking of or not. But that's that's what's going on in my head now. Uh, CG says without opposing views to compare and contract, it's just straight up indoctrination and propaganda. Exactly. Um, you know, I I think you should you should know how capitalism works. You should know what the counters to capitalism are. You should know what the arguments are. Obviously, in third grade, that's a little advanced, but you can teach people how, you know, I'm really sick of of hearing these people champion guys like Andrew Carnegie. I, I'm, I'm really sick of people championing people like John D. Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan. These guys were fucking cretins. And you should say, yeah, these people made their money and here's how they made their money. Here's how they became the titans of industry. But here's the counter to it. This is what workers were looking at. Strikes are always taught negatively. They're always talked about in this light of like, well, the workers, you know, they just wanted to, old Carnegie was trying to help them out. And these workers, boy, they were just asking for everything. Uh, oh, it's the one where she's eating ice cream. I'll have to do a revisit on that one. Uh, yeah. Judy says, read, read Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States. It's on YouTube chapter by chapter. Somebody actually gave me a link to, to one of the, one of the read throughs of it. I need to, I need to read it. Um, I read through about half that book. Uh, it's, it's, I will say this, if you are somebody that like an empath, which is a problem with me is 
you get mad at a lot of shit that's in there real quick. So it took me a little while to get through half that book. And I, and and the problem with me too is, I um I have a really hard time uh reading books in in general. Um, I, I it's just a matter of finding time and space to read. <laughs> but People's History is f phenomenal and fantastic. I've actually used information I've learned from People's History in my stand-up act. Uh, there are quotes and there are things that he writes about the Finding fi Finding Fathers that I think more people should know about. Um, yeah. Um, oh, is, is that... Uh, I think Cynical Girl just posted some of the lyrics from Jesse Jett's song. Hi, I'm Nancy. I love... Hilarious. Uh, because I bet she does. Um, yeah. But we are going to bring this stream to a close, my friends. Uh, I'm going to be hopping on to the uh, Action for Assange vigil in about 40 minutes, 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. couple new stories, a couple new perspectives to talk about. Uh, but in the meantime, if you guys enjoyed this stream, please make sure that you hit the like button, share, and make sure that you are subscribed to this page, whether you're watching on the Rockfin, on Odyssey, uh, especially if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, uh, and if you're listening to the audio version of this on, on a podcast, please, please, please make sure that you are subscribed to this. Uh, they unsubscribe people quite often. I, I lose followers on Facebook very randomly, and people go, I never knew this was you were doing this. Where did this come from? I oh man, I've been unlike from me. I've I've heard the uh, all of it. So just make sure that you're still, you know, subscribed and following all the things that I'm on. Uh, if you are on stable financial ground and would like to uh, make a financial contribution to the show, you can make a one-time donation. Uh, or become a sustaining member and get free tickets to uh, live and virtual shows. Uh, you get bonus stand-up comedy content. And you get a bunch of behind-the-scenes footage as well. Uh, that's specifically meant for, you know, sustaining members. You can do that right on my website, krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com slash donate. Uh, you can leave library t credits and tips over on Odyssey. You can leave a tip over on Rockfin as well. Still working on getting my account unlocked. Uh, don't know uh, why that was happening, but we're, we're still working on that. Uh, but, you know, I encourage you guys to leave tips and all that, and I'm sure they'll help me figure all that stuff out. Uh, last but not least, if you want to receive weekly emails with ticket links, videos, podcasts, uh, and and various different essays that I write and release to you guys first, uh, you can join my email list. It's free. It's free to join. There is a paid version that makes you a sustaining member, but you know you can just join for free and get all this stuff. Uh, it's krishmohanhaha.substack.com. K r i s h m o h a n h a h a dot com uh, dot substack dot com fucking up my own plugs uh and i want to mention that i do have shows coming up in pittsburgh cleveland baltimore lansing detroit uh and uh williamsport pennsylvania that's one we just added uh dc is going to be added soon uh louisville just got added so i'm looking at indianapolis cincinnati i'm looking into memphis huntsville chattanooga uh, you know uh, st louis uh, Minneapolis is going to be confirmed soon. Chicago is going to be confirmed soon. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to try to come to Wisconsin and, uh, yeah. So trying to come to various different places. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to, I'm, I've been working really hard to try to find a way to book a show in fucking Norfolk, Virginia, but I have, I've been having a hard time trying to contact the venue. So be, being that I'm the person that does my own booking, it, it becomes a little bit challenging, uh, when I can't get a hold of venues, but I also understand, you know, I'm sure, People are knocking down their doors to get get you know dates and all that. Uh, but yeah, uh, all the tickets and dates are on my website, krishmohanhaha.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, all right, folks. I think that's going to wrap things up on the stream. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you guys for tuning in. Cynical Girl, uh, Judy, uh, Melanie, Lynn over on Facebook's uh jeff 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 uh, points out those jobs still under your bed they're in my car jeff they're in the trunk of my car and no 
uh, I had to remove them when my car got illegally towed. Uh, so the so, so now they're under my bed. Now they are under my bed. <laughs> Thank you for your comment, Jeff. Uh, but we're gonna wrap things up. You guys are awesome. Take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And if uh, if you're feeling froggy, uh, come join us on the Assange vigil tonight, 9 p.m. Action for Assange. They'll be live on all the things. And uh, go check out that uh, go check out the interview I did with uh, with Graham Elwood, which is which was super awesome and and really really kind of him to to have me on on the show. Uh, but yeah, all right, folks. See you soon.